I thought not to present in a classical way to you our solution, but to share a story with you. It's a true story with one of our clients, and uh, please uh, let me introduce you first, Joseph. Joseph is a fixed guy in Malta. He is a guy that you will meet when you leave the airport or when you arrive at the harbor, and he is a guy that can help you to find a room, to find the best sightseeing tour, the best place to eat, or to rent a car. So in other words, he can help you with everything a tourist needs. Well, Joseph is not a very rich person, but he can make his living. He lives in a small apartment that he rented, and he owns an old car. In Malta, he has a lot of friends. In Malta, actually, it's a very small island south of Italy, about 500,000 inhabitants. But over the year, more than 1.6 million tourists are visiting the place. Unfortunately, also Malta had a lot of problems during the economic crisis. Less tourists came, and the ones who came spent less money. So the income of Joseph decreased, and he had difficulties to pay his rent, and he had difficulties to go out with his friends. So he had some financial problems. One day, he was involved in an accident. It was not his fault. He was hit by a tourist with a rental car, and his car was damaged. So he said, OK, I have to get a repair. So he was looking for a body shop in order to let his car repaired. But it was already the afternoon, so everything was closed. So instead of going to a repair shop, he decided to go to his favorite bar, where he met his friends. And one of his friends told him, look, why do you do a repair? You could ask for a cash settlement. A cash settlement means that you get a compensation for your damage, but you don't have to repair the car. Well, Joseph thought about it and liked this opportunity because the car was already quite old and he had anyway problems to get some cash. So why not to use this opportunity? So he decided to call the insurance company the next morning and to ask if a cash settlement would be possible. And it was possible because also the insurance interest, uh, company was very interested in making a very fast track processing because they had a lot of workload during the summer. And the responsibilities were very clear. There were no long-term liabilities, just material damage. So why not to compensate in cash? They made an offer and Joseph agreed. With a pocket full of money, he went back to his favorite pub. And he told the story to his friends. And they had a very nice evening, because now he had again the money to pay for it. A Couple of weeks later, Joseph ran out of money again. And he thought, well, actually, I still have a car that is not repaired. And maybe this time, we should stage this accident. And one of his friends was the driver of the rented car. And it worked. He got again the compensation from an insurance company, and it worked again and again. Actually, a fraud scheme, scheme was born. And it was not a fraud scheme that was, let's say, introduced by an organization, a criminal organization that targeted Malta to commit insurance fraud. No, it came out of the opportunity. It was an easy process. It was an uncontrolled process. It was a person who had the opportunity and the financial need. And out of this, the first case of fraud happened and then it accelerated very, very fast. But let's see also the other side. And let me show you Walter. Walter is a very experienced claims handler. He is sitting in the insurance company and he is the one that really believes in claim settlement because he believes that claims are the moment of truth for every insurance company. So he is focused on, on fast track settlements and he tries to serve the clients the best way. But of course, Walter is also a very responsible person. So he knows that he has to be careful to whom to pay. And that's why he is also trying to avoid to pay to people who are not honest. And Walter likes also statistics. And he realized in the last month that there had been an increased number of claims with rental car companies asking for cash settlement. So he thought what he identified to share with some of his colleagues. So he call, called some colleagues in the market 
and he asked if they had the same uh, impression. They shared the data, and indeed, a very clear fraud ring appeared. The same person, the same vehicles, with different insurance companies had been involved. And this was only possible because they shared the information between the insurers. So this time, Walter and his colleagues managed to identify this. And they fired all the evidence and they brought it to the police. And actually, one or two years later, there had been 22 people in the court um, um, is, uh, accused for insurance fraud where more than eight insurance companies had been involved. But Walter was not really happy about this outcome because he knew that only very few cases are going to court. And all the colleagues of Joseph are still in the market. And he has to work very hard to find out which of his cases are fraud cases and which cases are real cases. So he left after a long working day his office. And he met Pete. Pete is a cleaning guy. And he saw how Pete was mopping up the floor because the tub was broken. And Pete was trying to gather all the water in order to reduce the damage to the building. And he didn't have the time to think of the solution to call basically a plumber to stop the tap. So Walter called a plumber and the problem of Pete was solved. But afterwards, Walter realized that actually the same problem that Pete has, he has himself. He is running every day trying to investigate into the claims and trying to identify the correct claims from the fraud claims. But he's not doing anything against preventing. He's not doing anything in order to keep fraudsters out of the portfolio. So he's looking now for a solution that is like a plumper for, the, for his industry. So he needs a system that helps him to prevent that fraudsters can enter the portfolio. He needs a full strategy that will keep his portfolio healthy, which would make his job easier, his work easier, but also to help to keep the insurance premium low. And he needs an automatic system where you can score the risk at the front door before the application becomes a policy. And the risk score gives you this opportunity. It evaluates each of the risks and defines then the next steps to accept the risk, to reject the risk, or to trigger a process where maybe more evidence is necessary. And let me show you an example of one of our clients where you can see here the Frisk score, which is developing from zero up to more than 130. And you see here the loss ratio. So this was done by an attractive, retroactive analysis, looking at the portfolio, and we tried then to score the policies, what would have been the Frisk score if they had this kind of system in place. And what you can see here is that the higher the Frisk score, the worse the loss ratio. So you see here that, for example, 934 policies had a free score of more than 130, and the loss ratio was 138%. And if you have this kind of system in place, you have a discussion within the company. You can decide with your salespeople where to put the threshold, because believe me, it's not easy to reject a client. You have to have good arguments why you want to protect your portfolio. So now you can decide, if you have this information, where to put the threshold to reject about 4% or 5% of your applications in order to accept only policies, potential policies, with a loss ratio expectation of below 100%, or what should be the th correct threshold for your company. So you see, with this, you have the possibility to adjust it and to have a base for discussion with your sales. So, it is not only important to detect fraud. For detection of fraud, it's important that we share data, that we analyze internal data and external data, and that we detect the fraud cases. It is also important to prevent and to stop fraudsters entering to your portfolio. And when we talk about fraud, we talk about underwriting fraud, where people try to obtain a better price than what is actually their risk profile by manipulating the data. 
In many of your countries, probably age or the address or the mileage are pricing criteria. If people are manipulating this kind of data in order to obtain a better price, it is a kind of underwriting fraud. And by checking the data that the client is submitting against internal or external databases, you can identify this kind of cases in order to avoid underwriting fraud. But you can also avoid claims fraud. Claims fraud means that somebody tries to get a coverage for something that already happened. So basically, trying to cover for what he was not insured before. And we can help you in both. And if you have any further question, please do not hesitate to contact me or my colleague, Aiko Tosun, who will be here as well. Uh, and we are very happy to answer any further question. Thank you very much. Thank you.